So today we'll be continuing on torsion. In this case, we're going to be going over the angle of twist phi. So of course, let's say we have a circular shaft here and we have a torque T being applied to this circular shaft. Now the original um, position at this particular point here, now with this torque being applied, it actually deforms and it rotates or twists all the way to this point, right? So it actually changes the angle from the original location because it actually deforms. And this is your angle of twist phi, which is what we denote it as. Now the equation you're gonna be using for the angle of twist is equal to the torque times the length of the shaft divided by the shear modulus. Um, and the polar moment of inertia. And this is the equation you're gonna be using for solving the angle of twist. And keep in mind, the units of this is in radians. So this is the unit of the angle of twist. Now what happens when you have a situation such as this? Where you have a shaft fixed at one end and you have multiple torques being applied at different locations. So in this case, what exactly ultimately what would be this angle of twist caused by all the torques? Well, in this case, to find the angle of twist, you would have to sum up all the angle of twist caused by each of the torques. So in this case, there is a sign convention to use. So whenever you're dealing with a twist that's causing counterclockwise rotation, this would be positive sign convention. But however, if it's clockwise rotation, it will be a negative angle of twist. So this is one very important thing to keep in mind, the sign convention that's commonly used. And this is the total angle of twist at the end of this rod is the sum of the each angle of twist um, per the torque that's being applied at each of the locations. So let's go ahead and do an example. So the problem statement is the 20 millimeter diameter A36 steel shaft is subjected to the torque shown. Determine the angle of twist of the end B. So here is the steel shaft. As you can see, all the torques being applied 80 newton meter, 20, 30 newton meter at these locations B, C, D. And this, this pipe is fixed at A. And you can see the relative locations, 800 millimeters, 600, 200 millimeters on where the torques are being applied. So the shear modulus here of steel is 75 gigapascals. This is something that's known or you can look up in the table. And so this is the equation that we're going to be using for the angle of twist is equal to the sum of the torque times the length divided by the shear modulus and the polar moment of inertia. And the torque is at every specific point along the shaft that a torque is being applied to. So we know that the shear modulus of this material is the same throughout all these locations, B, C, and D, and the polar moment of inertia is also the same. So we can actually factor out the shear modulus and polar moment of inertia. One divided by GJ times the sum of the torques times the lengths. So let's go ahead and do that. So once we plug in all the values, we have one divided by the shear modulus, which is 75 times 10 to the 9 newtons per meter squared. I did convert the gigapascals to regular pascals or newtons per meter squared to simplify the units. Remember the, sh the polar moment of inertia is pi, um, the radius to the fourth power divided by two. So the radius in this case is 0 0.01 meters or 10 millimeters to the fourth power. And then we go ahead and do the sums of the torques times the length. So I went ahead and started from point D. In this case, since it's going clockwise, we stated that that sign convention is going to be negative. So negative 30, 30 newton meters times um, 0.2 meters, which is the length from the fixed point at A to D is 200 millimeters or 0.2 meters. And in this case at C, we have a torque going counterclockwise, which is positive sign convention. So it's 20 newton meters times 800 millimeters or 0.8 
meters in this case, remember the angle of twist would depend from the starting point to where that torque is being applied. So it's 600 plus 200, which is 800 millimeters or 0.8 meters. And finally at point B, we actually have the 80 newton meters being applied. In this case, clockwise, which is negative, and so 80 newton meters times 1.6 meters because you add up all the lengths from the fixed point to where that torque is being applied, and that's going to be the total angle of twist. So go ahead and do the calculations it gives us. The angle of twist is negative 0.1002 radians, and of course you could always convert the radians into degrees by doing the factor of pi over 180, or in this case, 180 divided by pi, which gives us negative 5.74 degrees. And since we use the sign convention going clockwise being negative, that's the angle of twist at point B. It's going to twist 5.74 degrees clockwise. And so this is how you solve the angle of twist when you're dealing with multiple torques being applied along a shaft. You have to sum each angle of twist with respect to each of the torques being applied at the specific locations along the shaft. Just um, keep in mind to, con to ensure to use the same sign convention, whether clockwise, in this case we use negative, and counterclockwise as a positive direction. Just keep that in mind throughout your calculations. Now the main application for the angle of twist is sometimes when you're designing a shaft, for whatever reason there's a certain tolerance or a certain amount of deflection that it could twist due to any other perhaps um, interferences along whatever system you may be designing. So using the angle of twist to be able to determine how much it actually twists or designing so it could twist a certain amount and not to exceed it accordingly. So along with the angle of twist, you will be using the shear stress as well. They both go hand in hand in the design phase.